Hi, and welcome to Coach Jude at Rangitoto. This is part four and the final part of my series on letting go of unhelpful, ha unhelpful habits that may be hampering your weight loss. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about moving into maintenance mode, what that looks like, and how to recognize that you're in it, as well as spotting when your action plans may need the odd tweak. I'm also going to be talking about what it feels like to be in the final stage, which I call it's all over baby, how exhilarating and joyous this phase is and what it does for your confidence. Stay tuned to ensure that you don't miss out on that sweet feeling of success. If you've followed my previous episodes on letting go of an unhelpful habit, you probably have been taking action on letting go of your unhelpful habit for several weeks. Now, it isn't easy to predict how long you'll need to stay in a particular phase, particularly in the action phase, as we're all different. Also, some habits are more entrenched than others and almost have a death grip on us. However, the good news is some do only take a minor amount of encouraging to leave the building and not bother you anymore. But before we get into the nitty gritty of this episode, don't forget that if you want some more general help, perhaps because you've just started your weight loss journey, or maybe you've stalled, check out the link in the description to my free comprehensive guide to kickstarting your weight loss. Okay back to letting go of those pesky habits. Now, from my own experience, one of the easiest habits I ever let go of was my Friday night chip and dip, dip fest. The process was this. I first decided to let it go, then I stopped going to the supermarket on a Friday evening to buy the crisps and dip. Maybe two or three weeks later, having followed this plan, I noticed that I'd got home without even thinking about stopping to pick them up. This quickly became my new behaviour and probably a month or so later I realised I had no desire to ever do it again. Giving up the booze was probably the habit that took me the longest to shift but even though drinking had been a regular part of my lifestyle for 40 years it probably only took me about six to eight months to get into maintenance mode. So how do you know that you're in maintenance mode? That's a good question and the answer is that you'll notice that it doesn't seem as hard. Basically there is a lot less conscious effort required to ensure that your habit doesn't return. You realise like I did that your usual trigger doesn't have any effect at all. So with my chip and dip vest driving home on a Friday was the trigger to stop at the supermarket and buy the necessaries. The first time I got home and completely forgot to stop made me realise that things had changed. With drinking, to begin with, early evening used to be a real struggle when my only thought would be, I want a glass of wine. I used to do all sorts of things to remind myself why I really didn't want to do this or distract myself by having a special non-alcoholic drink. The first time I had an evening when I didn't notice the time and didn't have the thought I wanted a wine felt absolutely amazing because I was winning the battle. Instead of my thoughts and external events controlling me, I was now in charge. Now to begin with, these instances where no conscious effort is required may be just occasional, but the first time you have one, that's the start of maintenance, because this is a huge milestone at the beginning of your journey. It almost seems impossible that you could get to this place, but once you've done it once, you can do it again. And the next time, and here's the good part, it gets even easier. Before you know it, you've not thought about your habit for several days, then a week, and so on. Also, the thoughts get less powerful at the beginning they can seem overwhelming and threaten to overpower you. 
Now they'll start to feel more like an annoying fly that you can bat away with a quick swipe rather than something you have to bring out the big guns for. Now, in maintenance, it won't necessarily be all plain sailing, as over time, you're likely to hit a situation or event that could still derail you. For example, with my snacking in the evening, I may have the routine evening at home licked, but when I go to my local pub for an evening with friends, the snacking gremlin roars back into life again. The most important thing here is to not treat a hiccup like this as an excuse to throw the baby out with the bathwater and decide that there's no way you're ever going to let go of this habit. Also, please don't beat yourself up. We're all human. Think about what you would say to a good friend if she was in this situation. Wouldn't you remind her of all the really excellent work she's done to date? How much she's achieved? And then you'd help her figure out what she wants to do next time she's in this situation. The options for what to do to tackle these problem situations will depend on a number of factors. If I again use my snacking habit as an example, first off I might ask myself, is this an occasional issue or a fairly regular event? The less frequent it is, the less I might try to change my behaviour. Essentially, give myself a free pass on the odd occasions like this. However, beware the slippery slope and possibly more accurately, the slippery mind. I don't know what your mind is like, but if I give myself a free pass for a certain situation, then I have in the past found myself engineering more occasions that fall into this category. I know, it's hard to believe. Also, I can get into the mindset of, I had a snack last night, now I want one tonight. Basically taking me out of maintenance mode and back into full on action mode, where I have to consciously manage my thoughts again. To be really safe, the black and white approach is typically the best, but it needs to be very specific. So in my example, instead of saying, I won't eat after 7 p.m., defining my desired behavior as I won't eat after dinner means I won't eat anything until I have my breakfast the next day. So snacking is definitely off the table, but I can still go out for a late dinner with friends without feeling that I have compromised my integrity. So a bump in the road for you may mean revising or clarifying your unhelpful habits. It may mean developing additional strategies for dealing with this new situation. For me in the pub, there can be a combination of social and environmental pressures. What do I mean? Well, when I go to the pub, it's often, but not always, the pub quiz. And at the end of the evening, the landlord kindly provides a free supper for everyone. Everyone tucks in and I sit there staring at the food. Now, at this stage of the evening, I'm not hungry and I don't really want the food either. But because it's sitting in front of me, an environmental pressure, and the others are indulging, a social pressure, I'm much more likely to indulge. Due to the fear of missing out, or fear of others thinking I'm strange, which are more distorted thinking patterns. So the question I need to ask myself is what could I do that might make this situation easier? There are a number of things. I could leave the pub before the supper is served, or I could go to the bar and or the loo until the food is consumed. I could ask the table to take a vote on whether we accept the free food or not. I suspect quite a few would prefer not to indulge, but are uncomfortable asking. If I ask myself, do I want to eat? The resounding response is no. So I could remind myself of all the reasons that I choose not to indulge, and remind myself of all the benefits of this course of action. So if you encounter a situation where you're tempted to indulge your habit, first of all, understand where the pressure is coming from and think ahead of time how you might manage that pressure. Come up with as many options as you can and then try them out, tweaking as necessary until you find something that works for you. But again, 
As you go through the maintenance phase, you'll notice that the bumps get less frequent and easier to negotiate. Now this final phase, it's all over baby, is definitely the sweetest. This is when you take no conscious effort to avoid your unhelpful habit. In fact, you have no desire to indulge ever again. Now you might think that this is impossible, to lose your desire for something you love. But I'm living proof that it is possible and you don't need superpowers to be able to, to achieve it. You just need to want the benefits of not indulging in your habit more and to follow a structured process like I've described here. Ten years ago, I never ever thought I could lose my desire to drink. In fact, my mother would have bet her entire life savings that I wouldn't. But here I am, sober for five years and absolutely thriving in my sobriety. I see my sobriety as the best gift I ever gave myself and it started by me realising that alcohol definitely didn't enhance my life. It offered no benefits, instead it made it seriously less enjoyable, less happy and potentially could have seriously shortened it. To be free of a harmful habit is truly liberating. It's like a powerful boost to your self-confidence and your self-efficacy. I can honestly say it's the best feeling in the world to know that I'm in control and not being controlled. So to recap, you know that you're in maintenance mode when you suddenly realise that your usual triggers are becoming less powerful. What may slip by without you even noticing? The whole process of letting go of your unhelpful habit requires less conscious effort and your new behaviour patterns are becoming your new norm. There may be the odd bump in the road, but you have the skills and the desire to conquer these and put them firmly in their place you're really starting to believe that you can get to that magical place where your desire to indulge simply doesn't exist anymore. And that is the place I want for all of you to find because it's freedom. And if you need some more ideas beyond kicking habits, maybe because you're just setting out on your weight loss journey, or perhaps you've stalled, check out the link in the description to my free comprehensive guide to kickstarting your weight loss. And on that thought, I'll leave you. As always, I thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. And don't forget to like this episode if you found it useful. Subscribe if you want to learn more. And do share your progress, your triumphs and your insights with me. All the best. Until next time. Bye.